So uh, let's do a synthesis problem. Let's see how to uh, synthesize this. Let me see if I get this right. No, let's start with this. Um, so uh, we haven't done much synthesis, so let's learn how to do a synthesis here. Um, one of the first steps you want to do is try to find a carbon in one picture that's the same as the carbon in a different picture. You want to find, uh, does everyone understand the problem? This is the original starting material, and the question is how can you make this into this? Okay. Um, so um, we want to find a carbon in the, uh, we want to find some atom in the starting material that we think corresponds to something over here. Um, so any opinions, do you, uh, w w these carbons over here, where are they in this picture? Let's call these carbons one, two, and three. They're on the left. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't seem like they would fit over here, right? This doesn't seem right because, uh, for example, uh, number two here is supposed to be a secondary, but this is a tertiary over here, so that wouldn't seem to correspond, uh, whereas this seems like uh, a pretty good fit. Number three is a primary, and this number three is a primary. Number two is a secondary, and this number two is a secondary. Now there is a problem with the number one, but maybe we can deal with that in a second. So it seems like these are the ones that correspond. Okay, so this is a very important problem for any synthesis. Try to find which carbons in your starting materials correspond to which in the products. Um, so one thing we want to go over here is these reactions, but we also want to go over skills for synthesis. So this is an important mm -hmm. skill finding the carbons in one picture that correspond to the carbons in the other. So which are the carbons that are new, that didn't come from the starting material? Well, these must be new. So if, um, should I call these one, two, and three? Well, no, I should give these new names. So uh, I'll be creative and call this number four, and number five, and number six uh, over here. So this is a really useful skill, numbering the carbons that are the same in the two pictures and inventing new numbers for the carbons that are different. All right, uh, and now we're going to uh, be attacking this problem using the technique of retrosynthesis. Now we know that uh, one way we could do this is working forwards from the starting material, but very often it's more efficient to work backwards from the product. Remember, that's all retrosynthesis means. Retrosynthesis just means working backwards from the product to ask what intermediates and uh, starting materials gave rise to the product. So let's work backwards uh, over here. But like, just wondering, um, in the synthesis problem like this, they wouldn't tell, like, we have all reagents possible, right? It's not like, right. so we can just like make up anything later throughout? You can add any reagents that you like, okay. that's correct. Except of course, yeah, any reagents that will help you to make this into this. You can't just say, oh, I'll take this off the shelf okay, and no, put this in the flask. You have to make this reagent into this one. But yeah, you can use any reagents you want. The rules for synthesis are generally, uh, obviously you have to obey if he has uh, certain special, uh, special instructions, but usually on a synthesis problem, you can use any reagents you want. Okay, so let's see how we're gonna do uh, this one. So I'll go ahead and redraw this here, using the redraw and modify technique. This was six, five, four, one, two, three. Now one thing that should jump out at us, we should ask what type of reaction probably led from this intermediate to this product. So far I've just redrawn the product, but what type of reaction was this probably over here that led to this product? Copper, lithium, with two type, with like two of something. Yeah, how do we know? Because we just said that's just about the only way we know to get rid of all the functional groups. Just about the only way we know to get rid of all the functional groups is to use the organocuprate. Plus, um, we're adding more carbons, and we, also, we know that also happens with organocuprates, and forming new carbon-carbon bonds. Um, so, which of the bonds in this picture didn't exist in this intermediate? Four, five, six. So, which bond precisely? The bond between which two atoms? One and four. Right. Yes. Because number one is the carbon over here that was not attached to number four before. So, this is a very useful notation, the squiggle notation. Or maybe I'll actually put the squiggle over here. The squiggle is used to indicate bonds that you need to form or break. Well, we know that this is a bond that got formed in this step. 
This is a bond that got formed in this step over here. So, which bond should I erase in this picture? The one you knew before. Yeah, this is the bond that didn't exist in this picture. Well, I just broke a bond with the number one and the number four. So, who did the number one? Who was the number one attached to in this picture? Um, copper, lithium, and another bit. Right, it was attached to a copper lithium, and we know that in order for that to work, you'd really want two of those. This is, you can see, this is kind of a notation for having two of the same thing over here. And the number four over here, I erased its bond too. Who did the number four used to be attached to over here before we got this product? One. Two. Remember that we want this molecule to attack this molecule to give this molecule. So what should be attached to the number four so that this will attack here? Two. Uh, yeah, you have two twos there. Oh, oh, thank you. They're trying to tell me I'm screwed up. All right, so yeah, so this should be the number one carbon over here. This should be the number two, and this should be the number three. And this just means that we have two of this group. All right, now I think I got it right now, and now the question is again, what should be attached to the number four that would allow this reagent to attack it? One. one. The number one carbon? Uh-huh, yeah. Now, it looks like we're not quite understanding the idea. Um, after the reaction, the one will be no, attached to the four. Yeah. Oh. You're asking what, like, the, oh. like what is We already know that they were attached over here, right? Remember, that's the whole idea of retrosynthesis. We're trying to ask what did they look like before they became attached. This is the whole idea behind retrosynthesis. It just means working backwards. Uh, so you should stop and think carefully about how we got confused here and what the right answer was. We should not just be redrawing the product. We should be drawing what this product looked like before it became the product in this step over here. Is this a reasonable reaction now? Would we expect this number one to attack uh, this number four carbon now? Yeah. yeah, now that would just be a normal SN2 reaction, mm -hmm. right? Um, we already said that organocuprates can do SN2 reactions. Remember, this can't be a alkyl lithium or a grignard because they don't do SN2 reactions. All right, everyone with me so far? Any questions? All right, now, you need to recognize that what I just did is very, very hard. What I did is, I think you guys kind of knew, you kind of might have been able to predict that before it looked like this, we started with an organocuprate and something with iodide, right? But what's very hard for students is to get the carbon chains right. It's very difficult for students to figure out what were the carbon chains that, are, that were attached to the organocuprate and to the iodide. Um, I don't think it should be hard, but it is. It's really hard for students to find the right things. The reason I don't think it should be hard is because what I just did wasn't that hard. All I did was I said, gee, this reaction is forming this bond. So I erased the bond between the one and the four, and I didn't really change the carbon chains besides that. One thing I did here is I used the redraw and modify technique again. I just redrew the original picture and I erased one bond, and then that gave me the carbon chains that just popped into our lap, what the carbon chains were. Okay, so it's very important uh, that when you review that you actually think about the thought process I used to come up with these carbon chains over here. All we did was just um, focus on what the product was going to look like and uh, say what, what it must have looked like ahead of time. Okay. Um, so this was our first step in our retrosynthesis. Uh, so we would put uh, these two things in uh, here. Okay, so um, where would this come from, though? An alkyl lithium was going under with a copper and an iodine. An alkyl lithium? Okay, good. So let's see if we can draw that structure of that alkyl lithium. Let's see what, what we should have started with over here. Oh, you've already done the problem? Or? Yeah. Okay. Number of your carbons? Right, notice that if you're not careful, it's easy to lose that carbon over there. So it's good to keep numbering each picture. So here's the 
3, here's the 2, here's the 1. Now, in this starting material over here, was the number 1 still attached to the copper? This is the, yes. the, the, the intermediate that we use to make the organocuprate. So, what are you asking, sorry? What, what should this intermediate look like that we use to make the organocuprates? Well, that should be attached to the yeah, because we know that organocuprates are made out of alkalithiums. So this used to look like an alkalithium. Oh, so it I looks like I made a classic mistake. I just erased my number one carbon, didn't I? All right, that would be a terrible mistake. So I should say that the lithium is attached to the number one carbon. When things are attached, you have to draw a bond that shows that they're attached. You can't just put the atom on the place, because then that erases it. Again, the reason I caught myself was because I was numbering. It's really important to number each of the pictures, even when it seems obvious. Otherwise, it's very easy to lose steps.